one of the biggest struggles when it comes to generative AI and text to image is the ability to create detailed faces when they are small. If you create an image from a zoom, it usually comes out pretty nice, but when you're trying to add full details or have a character from far away, AI really struggles when it comes to the small details, and most of the times you get crooked faces, crossed eyes, eyes that are not really compelling, and immediately it makes the image look very ridiculous and not usable. Fortunately, there is a very smart and simple way to fix it, and it's called Face Detailer. In this video, we're going to take a look how to easily execute it inside ConfUI. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started. So as always, we're going to start with the default workflow. This time, in order to use the Face Detailer node, we need to install something called the Impact Pack. Once again, it's very simple. Just click on the manager, go to the custom node manager, and here on the search, just type impact. Immediately, you will see the ConfiUI impact pack and just click the install button. I remind you that once it is done, you will see a restart ConfiUI button. Just click it and wait for the ConfiUI interface to reload. Once you're doing that, you will find here a node called Face Detailer. Face Detailer Pipe is a way to save yourself some nodes and you have one connection that includes several nodes in it. You can use it if you want, but I want to go over the Face Detailer itself because it's important for me to explain each of the incoming properties or parameters that needs to be hooked into this node. So before we try using the Face Detailer, let's just create a very simple um, prompt and we'll say a man standing near next to a bench in a beautiful park, natural hands, natural legs. And the reason we're writing it is because we want to make sure that we have both the hands and the legs inside the, um, the image. And we can create here a portrait photo of a man and let's just uh, and we will go with the juggernaut um, with the juggernaut model you can find it of course in the scene ai website and here we're going to make it a portrait photo so we'll make it 896 is a width on 100 and 152 in height. This will give us a more portrait look. We will change the steps to 16. We don't need more than that. And we will change the CLG to six. Instead of Euler, we will use the DPM, PP2M and the Keras scheduler. And let's give it a go. I'm going to remove the save image because I don't want it to clutter the output. I will do a preview image and let's just click Q prompt and see what's going on. And once we're done with the run, I'm going to close this preview panel. Once we're done with the run, let's take a look at the result that we've got. And as we expected, we can see that the face doesn't look good. We have several issues here, especially when it comes to the eyes. The nose is a bit crooked and we do like the image. Let's see how we can easily fix it so that the face looks very nice. So the first step to do is to add the face detailer node. And here we have a lot of parameters. We're going to quickly go over them and see how to use it. But the first parameter is as simple as possible. It's image. Image is basically the output image that we got from the sampler, or you can simply use the load image node in order to load a specific image that you already rendered. The second one is the model. I recommend using the same model as used to generate the image because if you use another model, there is a high chance that the results will not be seamless and there will be a, a clear line where the image was generated in a new model and also the result will look uh, different. If you use an, uh, a cartoonish model with a photorealistic model, the results won't look good. So I usually use the same model and this is what we drag from here. As for the clip, the same goes for the clip and the same goes for the VAE. 
when I use the phase detailer, I always use the same model and I use the same clip and the same VAE parameters. As for the positive and negative, there are two ways to tackle it. As starters, we're going just we're just going to simply drag the positive prompt that we used to generate the uh, the, um, the person itself. Do you know that sometimes it might be that we will need to change the prompt a little bit and create a new prompt that only focuses on the face. But for now, we're just going to use the same one and hope that the AI will be able to understand that it only needs to render the face of the person. As for the negative, I'm also going to use the same negative. I don't want to have any text or watermarks. Now comes the interesting part of the face detailer and I'm going to explain each section and what it actually does. The first thing we need to use is something called B-Box Detector. What B-Box does, it detects a section in the image and it marks it in a box as it says, Ultralytics Detector Provider. This is a multi function detector and it can generate also something called a segmentation detector that we also need to the face detailer. It's not a requirement, but it is much better to use a segment detector. But for now, we're going to take the Ultralytics detector and here on the models, we're going to choose models for the B-Box. Notice that you have two models. You don't need to download them manually. It will download it automatically when you're not, when you're missing them. So we have the face and the hand. As we are going to use the face detailer, we want to use the face model. So this node right now, what it does, it recognizes the face in the generated image or the in the provided image. And once it recognizes the image, it will send to the node a box stating the region of the face. So the box detector now gets a square around the face where we want the image to reflect, to replace and re-render the face. As for the SAM model, we will just look for the SAM loader node, which also comes with the impact. And I'm going to leave it on default. There is no need to change anything here. What the SAM does is also kind of a way to recognize the facial areas in the image. It just does it in a bit of a different way. I'm not going to dive into the technicality of it, but it does improve the way the model can now recognize the face. The last thing that we want that you've already seen before is the segmentation detector. And here we can simply duplicate the ultralytics detector and just here change to a segment person detector and what it will do it will help the model understand where is the person inside this image so three things are happening here we are recognizing the person in the image we are recognizing recognizing the region where the face of the person relies and we are adding an extra layer of detection to make the analytics even more precise so now that we have everything connected, let's go over the settings. So this is how it actually works. What it does, it takes the region of the face in the image. It basically generates a new bigger image of the face, allowing the AI to generate more details in the face and make the face more accurate. The max size is the size of the face that the face dealer is going to generate. Once it generated the face, it will take it and then it will scale it down and stitch it back to the area that was detected by the B-Box detector. The seed number is sim similar as in a sampler. We want it to be randomized, so the control after generate will be random. I'm going to change the number of steps to be the same as the sampler that originally generated the image. The same goes to the CFG. We're going to change it to six, and we're going to use the same sampler name, DPMP and Keras, and the number of the noise. The higher the number is, the more different the face that was generated by the face detailer will be from the original image. I usually start with the default the default 0.5 and if i need more details and more change i will make the number bigger or smaller based on my reference but usually the 0.5 gives a very good result feather actually allows you to say to the face detailer that it can use 
additional areas besides what we detected to generate a bit more details. Don't go zero because if you'll do zero feather, there will be a clear line where the new face was stitched. So the higher the feather, the more information and the more gradient the stitching will be. I usually start with five and if I see that there is an issue, I will increase it. Don't go berserk and do a feather of 50 because it will change a lot of details besides the face. So we want to keep the number pretty much around the number five. It will give good results. As for the thresholds, all these numbers of thresholds, the, the dilation, the crop factor, these are numbers that set how much we allow the model to extend beyond the detected segmentation. Once again, I usually use the default and if I need, I play with it a little bit. One thing that is quite important here is the cycle. If we do one cycle, it means that the sampler will render once and do the stitching. If we will do five cycles, for example, what the sampler will do, it will render the face five times one over another. So it will generate one version, it will denoise it a little bit, generate another, denoise, generate, denoise, generate. If you're using one cycle and you, and you see that the results are not good, try going to two or three and so on. Of course, you can do 50 cycles, but at some point there is no improvement in quality. I usually start with one cycle. On, on the worst case, I usually get to three cycles and the results looks very nice. In-paint in model allows you to use a specific model for in-paints. I've never had to use it and I get very good results when it comes to the face detailer. So this is pretty much it. And here on the output, we have several things. Image is the final image that will show us the final results, meaning that it will give us this image with the replaced face. Let's do a preview image right here. Now here we can see all kind of information that was generated by the face detailer. Crop refined, crop enhanced alpha, mask, and things like that. The mask will show us the area that was recognized as the face. The cropped will show us the area that was recognized by the B-Box detector. And I'm going to do a preview image just so you'll see it. If you'll see here that there is kind of a grid here, this means that there is a possibility to generate multiple images. And the reason is that face detailer will work on all the faces in the image. So if you have an image with five faces, it will run five times and it will generate five sections, one for each face that it recognized. And here you can see all the, all the things that face detailer recognized. As for the mask, in order to see a mask, we need to use a mod, a, a node called mask to image, convert mask to image, and then we can use a preview image to also see the mask. Let's give it a run and see what is the result that we got and let's go now i didn't use a fixed seed here so it will probably change the image i change it to fixed ju just so we will have consistency on the next run let's click q prompt let it run for a few seconds and see the results that we got so here we got the image before the fix let's see what we get You can see here that the face here is a bit better, but it's still off. You can see that the eye looks very weird and the mouth is not that detailed. And let's see what's going on here with the face details. It loads everything it needs to load, all the models and everything. And you can see here that just like the sampler, the regular sampler, the internal sampler runs and generates the information. And we will start here. So you can see here that this is the section that it cropped this is the area that it cropped to recognize the person this is the mask that it generated and this is only the this is the only place where it generates the image of the face this is the face that it managed to generate and if you can see here there is some kind of a transparency this is the feathering you can see that it didn't only generate the face itself it also did a little bit of information to the surroundings of the face. This is the feather. If we will do a run and we will make the feather bigger, you will see that it generates a much softer 
transition between the face and the, the gray area. And the final image is the original image with the new image stitched to it. And there is no doubt that this face looks much, much better than the original one. Let's put them side by side just so you can be impressed and say, wow, that's amazing. So this is the original one and this is the new one. Let's give it another run and see what we're getting. Let's also change it to randomize and let's click one more time and see what we get. Okay, so after another run, this is what we got. Now, although you can see that the face is not that bad, but we do have some crooked eye here and it's all a bit twisted. And this is the new one. Now here you can see that the ear is also affected. So now we can try and see if we can increase the feather a little bit that just to generate a bit more information of the new ear and let's see how we can do it so we'll go here let's just go to the view history and load it so we'll get the correct randomization seed we'll click fixed and this time on the feather we're going to make it to around 15 just to show you the difference so this is the previous one let's click Q prompt once again Let's let the face detailer run once more and see what we get. It started immediately with the face detailer because it already has the cached output of the sampler. So this is nice. And let's see now what's going on. So you can see it gave a bit more information and the feathering is much wider. And here on the final image, it also did a little fix to the ear. You can see here that this is the original area of the previous ear. That said, what we're interested in is the face itself so you can see here that it's not perfect let's see what happens if we give it a bit more cycles so we'll go here and we will do three cycles let it run and see if the results that we were getting are better and you can see now that the result looks much better the face is more even and the eyes looks nicer and i think that this is about it this is how it works. This is how complex it is. It's not really complex. And once again, the beauty of it is that you can do it on already existing images and you can do it also on multiple faces. Let's see though what happens if we go, let's move it back to one and let's see what happens if we will change the denoise to a much higher number. Let's do 0.8. And you will see that what it does, it co completely ex replaces the, the face. And this can be nicer if you want to generate a whole new face, if you're not really liking the face of the character that was generated. And you can see here that there is a whole different face here uh, than the original creation. I really hope you found this short video useful. Uh, I know that I really love the fact that I can fix the faces because a lot of times I have beautiful images with worst faces and it really is annoying. So let me know in the comments what you think. I really hope you liked it. If so, please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next video. Bye.